Okay, in the last lecture, we have learned what is the analogy behind the big O notation. Now here, we will look at different notations that are used in academics to describe runtimes. But in the industry, people tend to use big O. To understand different notations that are used to measure the performance of algorithm, let's look at real-life example. Okay, let's say we want to buy a brand new car. And obviously, we want to know more about the performance of car, which means that we are interested how many liters of petrol it takes to drive 100 miles. Now, in case of a car, there is not a standard answer for this question. Even though in any car's manual, it might mention that it takes, for example, 70 liters of petrol for 100 miles, this information is not direct because a car can perform differently based on the condition. This number can be different based on which condition you are driving the car. So if we drive the car in the city traffic, it's obvious that it takes more petrol to reach 100 miles than when we drive it on the highway. And there might be situation in which we drive a car in mixed condition, both traffic and highway. Let's imagine that it takes 20 liters to drive 100 miles in the city traffic and 10 liters on the highway and 15 liters in mixed condition. So here we see that the same car can perform differently based on the condition that we drive it. Similarly, algorithm can perform differently based on the condition that is given. We have three scenarios in case of measuring of any given algorithm. These are the best case the worst case and the average case. Let's say for an algorithm, it takes one minute to execute in the worst case scenario. In the best case scenario, it takes just five seconds to execute. And in finally, in the average case scenario, it takes 30 or 35 seconds to execute. So with the help of these three notation, we can define the best, the worst and average case of algorithm. As an example, let's examine quicksort algorithm. Those who don't know what is quicksort algorithm, you don't need to worry about it because I will provide detailed information in sorting algorithm section about it. But now you just need to know that it's an algorithm that sorts an ordered list based on the selection of random number as a pivot number and swap greater values. Let's look at this example over here to make things very clear. The first operation in this unsorted list targets the entire sequence of numbers. And the number is chosen as a reference for sorting, which is called pivot. It is chosen at random. This time for convenience, let's choose the rightmost number as the pivot. Here, in our case, which is five. The next thing that we are going to do is to place left marker and the right marker. Left is on the leftmost number and right is on the rightmost number. Quicksort uses these markers to repeatedly perform runs of operations recursively. The left marker moves to the right in each step and compares the number with the pivot number and stops when it reaches a number that is greater or equal to the pivot number. In our case, it stopped in the first case because 6 is greater than 5, which is pivot number. Then the right marker starts to move to the left and this time when it reaches a number that is less than pivot, in our case it stops at 3, which is less than 5. When both left and right markers have stopped, the markers numbers are swapped. In our case, 6 swapped with 3. So the operation repeats like this until all elements get sorted. So in the best scenario, all elements are equal and the pass over through the list happens once. So in this case, time complexity will be on because we are passing through all elements only once. And so if we have n elements in the list, our time complexity will be on. In the worst case, if we are unlucky, the pivot is repeatedly biggest element in the array. So the time complexity will be on squared. And in the average case, sometimes the pivot number will be very high and sometimes will be very low, but it will not happen over and over again. 
So in this case, time complexity will be O n log n. Okay, hopefully this example makes it clear and you have understood all three cases. Now to express different scenarios of algorithm, there are three different big O notations. The first one is big O. It's a complexity that is going to be less or equal to the worst case. For example, if we want to sort 1000 numbers, big O measures the maximum time we need for this sorting. Let's say we need maximum 10 seconds to execute this algorithm. This means that the execution will never exceed 10 seconds. It can be 8 or 9 seconds, but it will never be more than 10 seconds in case of big O notation. Then the next notation is big omega. It's a complexity that is going to be at least more than the best case. It is different from the big O notation. Here, we measure the minimum time that we need to execute an algorithm. There might be cases that we want to know minimum time of algorithm execution, which means that if the best scenario for the execution of an algorithm is two seconds, in terms of big omega, it will never be less than two seconds. For example, if you want to sort 100 numbers and we know that in the best case it takes two seconds, it will never be less than two seconds. Sometimes this information is useful for us. Now, in terms of big theta, it's a complexity that is within the bounds of worst and best cases. This means that if we have an algorithm with maximum execution time 10 seconds and minimum execution time 12 seconds, in terms of big theta, the average time will be 6 seconds for execution. Okay, let's look at real example for this three notation. Let's imagine that we have an array of 1 million elements over here. And our goal is to find a given number within this array. If we want to search a number which is located at the end of this array, in our case, which is 9, we basically check each element one by one until we find the element that we are looking for. In this case, we will visit all elements of this array. Let's say the time that we need to visit each element is one millisecond. So the time that we need to visit all of elements will be n multiplied with one, where n is the number of elements in the array. Okay, how can we represent this searching process in terms of notations? So in terms of big O notation, it will be O n. This means that the maximum time that we need to find any given number within this array is n. It will not be more than that. As shown here, to find the last number in the array, which is 9, it takes n multiplied with 1. So it will not be greater than O n. In terms of big omega, it will be omega 1. This means that the minimum time that is required for finding any given element is 1. It will not be less than 1 to find any given number within this array. In our case, it will never take less than 1 to find first element in this array. In terms of big heta, it will be eta n divided by 2. This is the average time that is needed to find any given number. This is because for finding different numbers, we need various units of time. So we need to take average of these numbers. We need to know all these three notations for academic purposes. But when it comes to the interviews, we only need big O notation. And that's all for this video. And hopefully you have understood three different types of big O notations.